What's going on, man? Uh, it's good to get you Perfect. on the show. First thing is, where are you right now? Uh, I'm in Liverpool. Um. Uh, on the train station after I finish second workout, um, I'll be heading to the third workout now. The strength and conditioning. What's your What was your first workout of the day? So my first workout was more of a um, cardio condition. It's more like 30 minutes um, circuit, like hard circuit. Then after that, uh, came back to Liverpool, uh, doing some drills, hard drills, and grapple. Uh, more like wrestling to the ground and pound, like MMA grappling. Next one is strength and conditioning. It's more about weights, um, something like that. And after the last one will be uh, jiu-jitsu. Where are you doing the the jiu-jitsu work at? Um, it's in the uh, it's in Wirral. Um, it's close to Liverpool. It's just maybe uh, by the train, like ten minutes away by the train. So I'm always traveling with the underground. Um, it's the same with next gen. They, they have two gyms. So one is focused on Liverpool is MMA. Uh, it has MMA and Jiu Jitsu as well. The world one is more, uh, focused on Jiu Jitsu. Uh, they have good Jiu Jitsu guys as well. So, um, and my, one of my training partners, uh, the one I fought last, Harry McKnight, uh, I fought him last. Uh, he's one of my training partners. He's very good. I help him and he helps me. And uh, I watch all the kids uh, grapple as well. So I help people and uh, I get helped. You know, four sessions a day is not that bad. You just mentioned that your former opponent, your last fight was against Harry McKnight. Now he's your training partner. How did that end up happening? Um, so uh, after we initially fought, um, we became friends. Um, he was being very respectful and even me, like, uh, it was a big opportunity for me to fight on Cage Warriors Academy on two weeks notice, and I fought him. And I believe um, he is real good jujitsu. Even now, when I'm training with him, he has very real good jujitsu. And when I was thinking of coming to England, I was thinking of Liverpool. And the first thing that popped up in my head was he said Next Generation Liverpool, and I've seen the guys that were there. Um, Fishy, there's Chris Fishy in UFC. Paddy, uh, he's one of the best Cage Warriors. I've never seen yet. Molly in UFC. So I was like, let me talk to him. When I talked to him, he arranged everything. So I can, um, uh, for the location to stay, I was easy. And uh, they helped me out to train the kids in wrestling because of my wrestling pedigree. Is, uh, it's good for England. And my jiu-jitsu is still great as well. Boxing is still great. So I helped them and he helped, they helped me out. There's a lot of training partners here. But he arranged everything for me. He's like, no worries. We'll get you sorted out. And... That was it. All right. Well, that sounds good, man. Well, now it seems like that's your new home, and and are you gonna? Are you, is that the plan for you now? Is just to work with them from this point on? Um. Yeah. Uh, I believe next journey she's gonna be my uh my home here. Uh. And then like I'll do next generation and AKA. Uh. Because I'm originally AKA America. Every fight I had, uh, I did all my training camps there. And uh, last year was, so from January till April was um, AK America training camp. I unfortunately didn't have any fights in 2019. There was uh, four fights that fall off. Like I was ready and they're like all backed out. I don't know why. Then I did four months and a half uh, from June, actually from June till uh, November. I did AK Thailand. I went the first time in there. It was good. And now I decided Liverpool because Liverpool I can um, I can work I can train and um, you know if I can teach people and earn some money you know better back home I don't have any uh, training partners for MMA um, the level is low and I need to go to a different places to learn but there's some good level in striking and jiu jitsu but and wrestling especially in my country but they don't mix it up so it's it's very hard for me. So I said, Liverpool is the next thing. Like, it's very close to me. Um, two and a half hour flight. Um, and if my family wants to come and see me, they'll come and see me. They were, they are going to come and see my fight. And uh, even my supporters, their wrestling team is going to compete in Manchester on the same day that I'm going to fight. They're going to be in the, in the morning. And then they're going to travel from Manchester to Bolton. It's not far. It's like maybe one, 
30 minutes or maximum an hour, they'll drive down to come and watch me fight. So it's easy. Before we get into your fight coming up, uh, I wanted to talk about the last year because you've been out of competition. Was it because it's just hard for you to find fights or what What, what has been going on the last year? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was trying to find fights anywhere, but uh, so uh, I reached, if I'm not mistaken, Bama and like all the British so I can actually come here and fight. And uh, they said, you have to be local because it's, we're not going to like, I understand them because, you know, local shows, they won't pay a lot to for me to travel. So I was like, it's okay. And then when I went to AK Town, I was trying to fight on the Australian. But as I said, four other fighters, just one of them actually was okay, but then dropped out. Three other guys refused me because I was only a 3-0 fighter and they're like 16 and 2 or whatever. And I was like, it's all right. Um, then there were two opportunities in my country and uh, since I fought two times in my country and I won so I was like, like everybody in my country expected me to be there and I was in my country for the shows and I was like I want to be there you know let me there and uh, the promoter just doesn't like me so I was like it's alright man like don't be fake just say it and he didn't say it but like he's putting guys that I fought and I beat easily. He's putting them there. And as an excuse, he's like, people want to see new pe- people. The want to see new fighters and the people were like, no, that we want to see Matt because we know he's the best there is in our country. And we know he can take the shot, the belt. And, um, he just didn't want to do it. He just didn't want to pay me enough. He didn't want to do anything. So I was like, it's all right, mate. You know, cage warriors Academy did more better than, than, anyone there so i'll take my chances there i prefer to fight better fighters and get my record great off better fighters instead of you know fighting guys that have normal records and just they just don't want to fight they always want to refuse me so i was like it's okay no problem just find me somebody that can fight me yeah there's you know a lot of fighters go through that situation it's not just you know People think that uh, it's it's easy to get a fight, but there's a lot of politics and, and other things going yeah. on behind the scenes. And uh, yeah, and your situation is a very uh, common story for a lot of fighters. But now you do have a fight coming up. Um, yeah, talk about that fight and 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 how that got put together. So um, I got managed by MTK in about, I guess, I think it's in September, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and there were a couple of fights, but it was dropping out. And then I told them I'm coming to Liverpool to train with Next Gen. And they fought me. They found me a fight um, against Jordan Bond at FCC. It was ready in December. I was like, and now, I was like, yeah, finally I have a fight coming up. Um, came here. Uh, and they were like, we don't know if it's going to happen. I was still getting ready for it. I didn't care because I, it was like either FCC or maybe UKFC. It's on the same day. So I was like, it's okay. No problem. We're going to fight on February 29th. And then, uh, the guy accepted, John Barn accepted. And I was like, so happy that I'm finally going to fight somebody with, uh, a good record. And, um, Five and one is good. Uh, he fought on Cage Warriors before, and um, I think I think it's gonna be great. You know, I'm not underestimating anybody, but uh, you know, I think I've been out for one year, and that one year I just trained so much, and with great fighters, uh, I sparred a lot with uh, Luis Pena for uh, for one of his camps. Uh, I did a lot of rounds with Sean Bunch. He's real great. Um, who else was it? Uh, Manel Cap in AK Thailand. Uh, now he's the risen bantamweight champion. Yeah. He's very good. Uh, like I, I've never seen anything uh, like the way he moves. He's very good. So yeah, I had a lot of experience. Different coaches. Uh, good wrestling in, in America, in Thailand. My my kickboxing and Muay Thai got a little bit better. And of course in AK America, I had my boxing coach. I can. I cannot just not mention him. Uh, Julius, um, he's a good bo- like boxing coach. He just made me great. And in my country as well, my boxing coach, Gar- Galea. Um, and I sparred a lot with him, and I got a lot more better in my boxing. 
game. So uh, looking forward to display my boxing and like even my wrestling got so much more better and jiu-jitsu just evolved in uh in the wrestling mma and so it's gonna be so great even submissions you might get, you might see some fancy submissions coming up even from here i'm learning submissions here so everybody has different styles aka america aka thailand and here they're all different um but i try to adapt and use every single thing that i learned from every one of them just to like evolve so it's gonna be a good show Believe me, it's going to be a great fight, and I'm looking forward to it so much. Being a part of those training camps and, and going in there and sparring with those guys, those guys are high level. Manel Cape, probably top 10, top 5 in the world in bantamweight division. There's no doubt oh, about yeah. that. I believe as a bantamweight, I think top 3, top 2, mm -hmm. I believe so because – He's so dynamic and he's so great. Like, even though I'm I'm a featherweight, I'm a bit bigger than him. We're still like, he's very good. I, all the respect, like I have all the respect for him. You know, I spar with Nolan Suave. He's in the UFC as well, bantamweight. Uh, but just Manel is just on another thing. Like when I fought, like when I sparred regularly, I was like, wow, this guy's damn good. You know. Really like spar with him. I really had to change my game with him and uh, emphasize and just be 100% every time with him so I can do well. But I actually want to thank him a lot and uh, I want to actually say good luck to his next fight. I will see. I saw every fight that he did and I was happy that he won the world championship in New Year's Eve. I did the training camp with him, not the one for the championship, the one before. Um, and then when I saw him for the championship, I was like, nice. Yes, yes, I did that whole camp with him from the beginning to the finish. And um, I, I was so happy that he got the title fight. I was like, finally, he got the title fight. I, I really wanted him to win and just beat, beat uh, what's it, uh, Akira? Uh, uh, what's his name? The one Asakura. He, uh, Asakura, yeah. I, I thought the first fight he won very close, but this one, he just shot him down and just... <laughs> He got, got all the rhythm. Like he, he, I was like, wow. Finally, you know, when I saw him in his sparring, I was like, yeah, you know, that's what that's what happens. Uh, he said he's going to outbox. Uh, the, the other guy said he's going to outbox him. I was like, you, you're you not even close. If you think you're going to outbox him, he'll just wrestle and grapple. He'll grapple and strike. So, nah, not even close, mate. <laughs> when you're a part of those camps, you know, and especially Manel, and he goes out there and performs the way he does and, and, and the level that he's at, your confidence must reach another level and you know, and your skill set has probably risen so much in the last year that heading into this fight, you must feel like unstoppable in many ways, right? Um, yeah, what, like when I spar with the high, highest level, I'd say, yeah, you know, I, I already have a taste of what uh, like it, it is like in the UFC how like top 15, top maybe top 15 guys feel like and maybe top 10 and Bellator fighters and uh, and of course the recent champion. I was like, that's what it takes. That's how it feels like. Mm -hmm. So I was like, mm, okay, I am close. My game might not be, I might not be as uh, like have that much weapons as they have maybe, but um I feel like I can push. I, I can give him a very hard time. So at these shows, I'll say, yeah, I'm good, but I cannot let it go to my head. I'll never underestimate anybody even because look at it this way. Those like UFC guys and uh, those who are in UFC, Bellator or 1FC, uh, risen anybody in there. And a guy like me comes in with just three fights and you're like, oh, he's a pre-zero fighter with fought on Cage Warriors Academy. So he's like, you know, he's just a beginner. He's not that, he's a professional, but he's not that experienced or he doesn't fight on any show, so he doesn't have any name. And he comes in and he gives you a challenge. So you always have to be careful of people that don't have any name because I believe we are the most hungriest person. In AKA, there was one guy, um, David, uh, yeah, David, he might not have that much fights, but he's one of the toughest guys I've ever had to face. And he's not known that much, but, man, he's good. So 
everybody told me this when you're when you don't have a name and you want that and you want to be in UFC or anything and you're just working hard for it you'll be more hungrier than maybe other UFC fighters maybe not not all because I believe UFC fighters and all Ben Bellator and all they're great and they have they're such great but you know those guys lower guys they always push and just want to be better they always when they see a ufc fighter it's like wow i'm gonna spar with him you know i want that challenge same thing as me when i when they first told me to par, spar with luis Pena, i was so excited because i was such a huge fan i'm still a huge fan he's one of my best like he's my friends we talk a lot even when i was in ak town i thought it was coming up so i was like yeah finally man i hope to see you here and hope we spar again um so yeah I, I always get excited and uh, like yeah finally you know i i'm gonna see where i am so it was a huge thing yeah man um, even here yeah, always trying yeah. to help uh people with the wrestling because in england the the wrestling is not like america of course america is just uh they're, they're, they're most of them wrestlers with boxers here they're more strike like kickboxing or boxing with jiu-jitsu the wrestling is still um england in general it's not that super high like America, but they're great still. So I'm looking forward to seeing England starting to get like those guys like Darren Till, uh, Holly, uh, Molly. Molly will be a champion for sure. Even uh, Chris Fishy, he will be a champion in the near future. And you're going to see a lot of UFC fighters out of next gen very soon. For yourself, you know, you got this fight coming up. I'm pretty sure focus on that. But are there what are the long term goals for yourself? Is it is it the UFC? Is it is it Bellator? Is it Rise? Is or is it just you're just trying to level up and it doesn't matter what promotion it is? Um, it well for me it's I always wanted to be in UFC because um like UFC is known as the best, but um I wouldn't I wouldn't just say no to any like if everybody anybody just wants to offer me anything like I'll get everything from the table, but of course my my aim is for the UFC. One FC is good as well. Like, I like One FC. I always watch One FC, and I like the promoter as well. I like UFC. Promoter. I like every promoter. Let's put it this way. Um, but I believe um, UFC has like featherweight. Let's put featherweight. Featherweight is now uh, Volkaner o- o- Volkanovski. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, he's just that good even max holloway i thought it was good but i never thought he would lose max holloway would lose against him thought he would lose against uh someone else or maybe if he went to against khabib he would khabib would destroy him I, I always said that he would lose against grapple but i never thought he would lose like this against volkanovsi so uh, uh i'm looking forward maybe if the ufc will get me or i'd like to find cage warriors after this or if fcc want to give me a title shot i'm up for it but yeah or both, FCC, uh, FCC featherweight champion, and then go to Cage Warriors, get some fight, get the title, and then after that we'll go in the UFC or whoever wants to go. It's up, it's up to them. I'm not off. I'm not uh, saying no to anybody. I'll say yes. You were out of action the whole year last year. This year, how many fights would you like to have, and and where would you like to be by the end of the year? So four or five. I, I reckon four. Let's put it this way. Four. If I'm not injured, I'll put five. But in between, after this fight, I'm going to uh, do a jiu-jitsu competition. Um, I was going to do it uh, last Saturday, but it was like either um, 70 or 76 kilos. And I'm like lower. I'm like very low, like almost in 70. So I was like, I will not risk any injury before the fight. But after the fight, I will make a jiu-jitsu competition even after – after every fight, if I'm not injured, I will do a jiu-jitsu competition. And if anything, I will wrestle as well. I'll do wrestling competition. Last year, I only did wrestling competition for my country. Um, came third. It's not bad. I thought I, felt I could do more better, but uh, it was like on a few weeks. Notice. I had to cut a lot of weight, and I was like, it's all right. I'm just going to have a enjoyment, you know, feel wrestling and uh, compete in a heavier category. But I, I enjoyed it. I felt very strong. I'm going to looking forward to watch to see what wrestling is in MMA, I'm going to show my wrestling in the MMA game and my my overall great game. So, I'm going to enjoy it. Four fights, five fights to the max, and more, and maybe three competition in jiu-jitsu. 
All right. February 29th, FCC 25. Thank you, Matthew, man, for the time. Um, uh, good luck on the fight. And uh, hopefully you do get the four or five fights this year and uh, and get picked up by next year by someone out there. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're a prospect. You're still young. It's going to be great to see what you do this year. Absolutely, mate. Thank you very much. Much appreciated for the interview, man.